Hello, students. I'm excited to see you yet again in this demonstration class. We have been having a series of demonstration classes where we are showing us practical on different aspects of the physics practical exams. We started with a practical on mechanics, then we looked at a practical on optics in our last class. For today's class, we are looking at a practical on electricity, which is usually question number three in your exams. We will be looking at a demonstration on resistance, which is associated with Ohm's law. Before we go into the demonstration as usual, we need to first examine some terms, beginning with Ohm's law, which is what we seek to demonstrate. Ohm's law, as put together by the physicist, the German scientist, George Simon Ohm, states that the current flowing through a metallic conductor or a wire is directly proportional to the potential difference across the ends of the conductor or the wire. So long as the temperature of the wire or the conductor remains constant, or other physical conditions of the wire remains constant. That's Ohm's law. So current passing through a wire is directly proportional to the potential difference across the ends of the wire. Other conditions remaining constant. So we are going to demonstrate that this law is true because through Simon's demonstration, the law helps us see that potential difference V directly proportional to current I, when we remove our proportionality sign, we bring in an equality sign with a constant of the proportionality. So in this equation, the constant of proportionality is represented as capital letter R, which is resistance. So R is the resistance of the metallic conductor, the resistance of the wire. So if you make this resistance subject of this equation, we will discover that resistance is equal to the potential difference V all over the current I. And so this expression helps us see that resistance is proportional to potential difference directly, but proportional to current inversely. So what that means is that when resistance increases, the current that will pass through the conductor will reduce, while potential difference will increase. So that's the relationship between these parameters. Now, in demonstrating this concept, we will use the apparatus I have before me. The first apparatus here is called the ammeter. The ammeter is indicated by the capital letter A on top the instrument. It is used to measure the current flowing in the circuit and it is connected in series with the source of current in the circuit. Next is the voltmeter. The voltmeter is indicated by capital letter V on top of the instrument. The voltmeter is used to measure potential difference across the cell or across the resistor in the circuit. To measure potential difference across the cell or across the resistor in the circuit. If we are measuring the potential difference across the cell when the cell is not supplying current in a circuit. This potential difference is called 
the EMF of the cell. The EMF means electromotive force of the cell. That is what you measure when the cell is not supplying current in the circuit. But if the cell is connected in a circuit and current is made to flow around the circuit, the potential difference measured by the voltmeter in this case is called the terminal potential difference. And so practically, if you carry out this demonstration, we will discover that the EMF of the cell is usually greater than the terminal potential difference because of what we call voltage drop or loss voltage in the circuit. The next instrument we have here is called a resistance box. The resistance box is used to provide different resistance values in the circuit. If we want to change the resistance values in the circuit, we use the resistance box to do that. Then we have a resistor. This is called a resistor. Specifically, it is called a standard resistor. A standard resistor is a resistor whose resistance value is known. And it is fixed by the manufacturer and it is always indicated on the resistor. So this, for instance, is a 1 ohm standard resistor. A 1 ohm standard resistor is written on it. Next is what we call a plug key. Plug key because it has a plug that is used in the key. When the plug is attached to the plug hole, current will flow through. The circuit is said to be closed. But when the plug is removed, there is a gap in the circuit, and so it becomes what we call an open circuit. So a closed circuit is a circuit without a gap. So current will flow in such a circuit. An open circuit is a circuit that has a gap, and current cannot flow in such a circuit. So the gap provided is done with the aid of the key, the plug key. When you fix the plug, the gap is closed, current will flow. When you unplug, the gap is provided, current will not flow. That is the role of the plug key in the circuit. Next is a battery. This battery is made up of two dry cells. Two dry cells connected together. Now these dry cells are connected in series. This connection is in series. The first dry cell has an EMF of 1.5 volts. The other one, 1.5 volts. With this connection in series, the total EMF is 1.5 plus 1.5, and that gives us 3 volts. So if we use this wire, connect these two wires to the terminals of the voltmeter, the reading of the voltmeter will give us the EMF of this battery, which, like I said before, will be 3 volts, 1.5 plus 1.5. So now, before we begin this demonstration, we will need to determine the EMF of this battery by connecting the positive terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the voltmeter the negative terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the voltmeter. That is how the connection is done. If you do it the other way around, 
the pointer will deflect backward and you will not be able to take your reading. So it is important to know that if you want to connect the battery to your voltmeter, to measure the EMF of the cell, positive of the battery must be connected to positive of the voltmeter, negative of the battery connected to negative of the voltmeter, and then the pointer will deflect, that will give you the EMF. So let's measure now. Next is to connect the circuit, the ammeter, the voltmeter, the standard resistance box, the plug key, the standard resistor, and the cell. All will be used in this connection. And then we need connecting wires that we connect one instrument to the other. So this is how the connection is done. Two of the connecting wires will be joined together. Another two connecting wires will be joined together. Now these two pairs of wires will be used to create parallel connections. Parallel connection. Because the voltmeter will be connected in parallel across the resistor. So to do that, we will have two pairs of wire that will be joined together. So that this point where the two wires are joined together will be connected to the two terminals of the standard resistor. The two terminals of the standard resistor is where these two wires joined together will be connected to. So we'll do just that. Then the other two ends of these two wire, one will be connected to positive terminal of voltmeter, the other will go to one of the terminals of the resistance box. We do just that. Then the other two wires, one will go to the negative terminal of the voltmeter, and the other will go to the positive terminal of the ammeter. So we'll do just that. Please, student, make sure you pay attention to this order. Because if you can learn this connection, it will become a lot easier for you in your examination, especially the practical exams. Then this one more wire will be used to connect the other terminal of the resistance box to so one of the terminals of the plug key. So we'll do just that. This.
resistance box to plug key. Next, remember our battery, the two dry cells connected in series, has two wires attached to the two terminals. The red wire, which is connected to the positive of the battery, will go to the other terminal of the plug key. And then finally, the black wire connected to the negative terminal of the battery will be connected to the negative terminal of the ammeter. Black wire to negative terminal. That's negative to negative. So this is the connection completed. So next is for us to fix our plug on the plug key for current to flow. With the plug removed, like we explained earlier, this is what we call an open circuit. An open circuit has a gap, and it is the plug key that provides this gap in the circuit. When the plug is removed, there will be a gap, and the current will not flow. And such a circuit is called an open circuit. But once we fix the plug in its hole, current will flow in the circuit, and this is called a closed circuit. So what you would do thereafter is to read the value on the ammeter and read the value on the voltmeter. From what we have here, the ammeter is reading one ampere. The voltmeter records one volt. And when, from the formula we gave at the beginning, that the resistance is potential difference over current. So if potential difference is one, and the current is one, one divided by one will give us a resistance of one ohm. And that is exactly the resistance value of this resistor, one ohm which means our connection is correct and Ohm's law is verified. So that is what we have for today's practical demonstration. And that we have verified that Ohm's law is true using this circuit arrangement. Thank you for being a part of today's class. As expected and as always, I look forward to hearing from you, your feedback, your question, if you have any, your comments, your contributions, your observations. Do well to make use of the plugin, your notes and questions to send me this feedback. Hoping to hear from you soonest. Thank you for being a part of this class. See you in our next class as we continue to prepare for your forthcoming exams. Bye for now.